Chris Coachman is absolutely correct. In a recent post, he said he sees way too much emphasis on doctors learning about execution and not enough about treatment planning. And I couldn't agree more. Why? Because we typically go to courses that show us how to do the surgery. People love to say, I don't want to come to a course unless it has a hands-on part where I'm placing real implants. And I say, that's really interesting because if you learn implants the right way, there is literally very, very little hand-on part. Like the hand-on surgery part is so trivial compared to knowing where to place the implant. If you know where to place the implant, then getting it there becomes a, a, a very simple exercise of using a type 4 guided surgery, and it puts it exactly where you want it. So the hands-on part and the execution part that we spend so much time studying and learning about, it takes primary seat. It takes first seat in almost all the courses that you hear about, but treatment planning, it right, is where it's really at. Now, why would Chris Coachman know that? because he runs a dental lab. And what dental labs get are the outcomes of our execution. So when we do a case, and then we send a, an impression to the laboratory, and it looks like doo-doo, they laugh at us. Now they don't laugh at us in our face, they laugh at their bench quietly because they wanna keep us as good, pay, as good paying customers. But honestly, they look at our crappy work and they go, look at this crappy work. And they know what is crappy and what's not. When your implant is in the wrong location, a reputable lab will immediately know. Why, how, how do they know? It's real simple. If you can't place an implant, with a screw retained prosthesis, you're most likely in the wrong position. It doesn't get any more easy than this. If you place an implant in the right location, the screw access hole is right in the center of the tooth. If it's a molar, it's in the central developmental groove halfway between the mesial distal. If it's an anterior tooth, it's in the cingulum. It's that simple. The only time that a laboratory might be forced and required to use a custom abutment is when they're, the teeth are small. So upper laterals and lower incisors. The teeth are so small that oftentimes having an access hole for a screw is too big for the tooth. So you would have to make the crown way too big for it to fit the arch. So in those cases, those are cases where they need to do a custom abutment. But how many times do they have to do a custom abutment because the implant's in the right location to recover from a poorly placed implant? All the time. All the time. So when they see that repetitively coming in the office, what they, what they see are doctors placing implants with not enough emphasis on the single most important thing that we can do for our patients. And that is get the implant in the right location. If you get your implant in the right location, the probability of success is darn near 100% for life. And I don't care what the health is of the patient. I don't care what their habits are. I don't care if they if they're, uh, have GERD and they're washing their implant with acid every night. It doesn't matter. These implants are extremely resistant to just about everything we can throw at them. If, with one caveat, and it's the most important caveat, the implant has to be in the right location. And so some of us say, well, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, let me, let me try it this way. You have an implant that is surrounded by bone. It has two to three millimeters of, of bone all the way around it, everywhere it is. It's pretty stable, right? Pretty healthy, right? Now, on top of that, we put a collar of attached gingiva or, or keratinized gingiva, three millimeters circumferentially around your implant. So there's nothing but attached mucosa, attached gingiva, keratinized gingiva around the neck of your implant on top of nothing but massive amounts of bone. There's nothing that's going to hurt that implant. You can't hurt that implant. It's like rock solid. It's beautiful. I think everybody would agree that if you had those conditions, that's great. Now, somebody will say, well, well, you don't always have those conditions. Yes, that's true. And in those times where you don't have those conditions, it's imperative for us to grow it. <laughs> that's the decision when we go forward with doing a bone or soft tissue graft. If you don't have it, grow it. The answer isn't, well, I don't have it, so let me do less than sub, let me do subpar dentistry. 
because I didn't have it. That's a really poor way of thinking. The way you look at it is you go, I either have ample amounts of bone and soft tissue so I can proceed with the case or I don't. And if I don't, then I grow it. It's that simple. It's a very simple business model. It's a very simple treatment planning model, right? It's very simple. You either have it or you don't. And if you have it, it's going to be great. So you place that implant and all that bone with all that uh, attached gingiva, you're going to have a great solution for a long, long time. And, Do and Chris Coachman knows that. And any reputable lab will know that. Talk to any reputable lab that does a lot of restorative work. And they will tell you, it, they will easily tell you, these are the cases where we have a lot of problems. Not only that, but when you do a case as a, as a clinician and you restore a case and the restorative solution needed, it required a custom abutment, okay, because the implant was in the wrong position. The likelihood of having mechanical complications down road is really high. And when you have mechanical complications on a prosthesis that costs a lot of money to make, you call the lab back. The doctor calls the lab back when it breaks and says, your, your lab work broke. And they're trying to put the blame on the lab. They're trying to push back on the lab and saying, your, your lab work didn't break. Your, your lab work broke. And now the lab is in a bit of a, of, of a, of a, a pickle here, aren't they? Because they know the actual answer to this problem is you. You put the implant in the wrong position, and you asked me to give you a restorative solution, which was a Band-Aid on top of a sick implant, a bad-placed implant, and it breaks. Now, they have a choice. They can either tell you, look, I'll fix it this time, but you better do a better job doing your implants going forward. Well, they don't do that. And the reason they don't do that is they like you, and they don't want to lose you as a, as a doctor. So they have to bite their tongue and say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll remake it for you. Okay, but in honesty, if you ask them, in all honesty, when these things break, how many times is it their fault in terms of poor craftsmanship versus implant placement in the wrong location that, that required a prosthodontic solution that was bending all of the mechanical principles, that's breaking all of the mechanical rules to get that to work? You guys that follow the, the channel know that if you generate a Snoopy, the likelihood of mechanical complications and subsequent biological complications is multiple X's, four to seven times more than if you have a heart-shaped solution. And that is what happens when you get the implant on the wrong location. So you got to get the implant on the right location and all these things will go away. That's why Chris Coachman knows this. That's why any reputable lab knows that. That's why he made the post. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, the Smile Engineer, helping you re-engineer your practice every day.